Greg Sirio here with the People Manufacturing here at St. Petersburg College in the manual machining room. So we're just going to show you the basics of a manual mill today. If you're a student and you're in your math class and you're thinking, you know, why do I need to know about this coordinate planes or graphs or XYZ? The machinist, industrial maintenance, we're going to show you how in your math class you're going to use all of those examples. So whenever you come to a new machine, it could be intimidating, but you have to feel it before you turn it on. Make sure that you are safe, wear your safety glasses, and get used to your machine. So if you know that there's three coordinate planes, your X, your Y, and your Z axis, that's all controlled by these different handles and knobs on this machine. So this one, as we crank it, our table lowers and rises. This is our Z axis. So whenever I want to work on my X axis, I walk up to the machine as I'm getting used to it and just get used to the motions. Make sure you have smooth movement. This one has a power feed that you'll see in a second, but a lot of older machines that usually sit there and wait to be used, unlike production machines that are used daily, you want to make sure that this has the proper oil, lubricant. You want to make sure all your moving parts are moving. So to move our Y axis, it's this one. And it'll bring our part closer to us, which is the Y minus, away from us, Y plus. Because of technology change, you're, you're, not only did your machine change, but the tooling that went into that machine. So this tool specifically, in most environments that's manual, because you're using your hands, is going to be using cobalt or high-speed steel or HSSCO. So what that means is your tool itself is made of steel, tool steel, hardened. So it's really, really hard, but it's a lot more forgiving. So if I were to drop this tool on the ground, it wouldn't break. This is a, I believe it's a one-inch high-speed steel end mill. It's got one, two, three, four flutes. But we're using this one instead of what's called carbide. As you progress in your learning journey in manufacturing, you'll learn about what carbide is. Carbide is a, another metal, but because of how hard carbide is, if I were to drop a carbide end mill, it would shatter because of the density. So it's the same principle as if you hold an egg from top to bottom and flick the side, or if you just push from top to bottom, it probably won't break. I mean, if you're a he-man and you squish it, you're gonna break your egg, but it's how the metal inside of this is formed, compressed, and molded, and then it's pushed together into this form and then precision ground to that shape. So these shapes determine how we're going to cut our metal. This is an end mill. It doesn't cut with the bottom, it cuts with the periphery, the sides. So whenever you have a drill bit and we're pushing a drill bit into the material, all of your cutting forces are coming to the point of that drill. So on this one, we're using the periphery. So you'll see getting used to your axes, depending on the direction you go, it's going to throw your trips in a different direction. So these aren't something that you want to squeeze because they're a little bit sharp. This is just aluminum, but you see how it comes with these long stringy chips. If you look at it, I can tell what someone did before me. So whenever I hold this chip up, so you can see that this fits a flute. So it looks like this was a pretty long length of cut. It was probably square something, but who knows what was going on before because these chips it's pretty thin, but usually this machine is used to square apart, which we're gonna show you how we're facing off the top, which is the first part of squaring something. Down here in the south, we call this the rock and roll button. Rock and roll. It's important not to touch your z-axis after this because you want to make sure that you're going to cut the same pass. So I am going to shift our y-axis just a little bit. So it's going to engage, engage about half the cutter because now we're going to mill it the other direction. Rock and roll.
You can tell that we're almost done. We have one more pass that we need to make to get across the whole length of the surface. I usually don't bury the full diameter because I don't have a lot of coolant or air nozzles or a lot of bells and whistles that most machinists have when they're on a manual machine because we're just learning here. So I'm going to make sure that I blow these off and then we're going to make sure that we're going the right direction because we're switching back. Blooper reel. Now we're going to hit the rock and roll button first. The manual machine is your number one companion for CNC machining because you can do one-off quick parts that complement your operations while you're machining. So what is a milling machine? Now you know. Here's a test cut to show you the basics of how this works. Hey, My man, how you doing? I'm pretty good, how about you? I'm pretty good, it's running the milling machine here. Your cut's a little on the, the rough side, but listen, throw some carbide in there, a little bit of coolant, bump the feed the feeds up maybe a little. Awesome. What speeds nice. and feeds? Oh, that's a whole nother video, isn't it? <laughs> that sounds like the next video. If you want to learn more about manual milling machines, I suggest you go to thepeoplemanufacturing.com and learn how you can join an apprenticeship program near you. See you there.